Good evening, and we are live. Good evening. It's Thursday. It's Easter. It's Good Friday tomorrow, guys. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what you've got planned, but we'll go through that in a minute. So, Linz, run the intro. Good evening. Welcome. It's Barry Make Sense Live. You just did that. I could do it again. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um, what we do is we just have a little bit of chit chat, obviously leading up to people joining. If you're new, do you want to walk them through the whole click this link business? Yeah. So I try and put the um, link up for live on a Wednesday generally, because if I do it too early, you'll all forget. So you, it should come up like this. Um, click the ecam.live link for me that I've circled here. That just means that we can all see you. Otherwise, you can be chatting and I don't know any names. So it just gives us a good idea of who's on. And then also in the bottom uh, right-hand corner there, you can see a get a reminder link. Someone was saying it's not working, so I don't know whether different phones don't work or if it's random or maybe it's not working for everybody. So just let me know. Um, but yeah, it's great. It makes life easier if I can see everybody. Um, it's then, great to know who we're talking to. Yeah, I'm not talking to uh, random. And we we like taking the the mick out of certain people, so it's always not. To, it's always good to know who we're taking the mick well, out of. It's quite nice to give it back because we tend to. We do receive it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do receive Evening, it. Evening, Andrew. Hi, Martin. Okay. Um, do you know we've had you guys running around for the past what five six weeks for a treasure hunt? Don't mean to point out the obvious. April Fools. <laughs> What, there's no machine? No, it, it's not real. <laughs> it's just a cardboard <laughs> cutter. There's no, there's nothing inside it. It's just a shell. <laughs> it's just a prop. We just use it. When we do the courses, we use it as a prop just to try and explain what the machine is. There's nothing in it, okay? <laughs> so, April Fool's. We did talk about that, about the fact, but then we thought, oh, that's a bit mean. I, 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 I saw the ones it. from Colin this morning. Obviously, he was putting up the Wagner ones with a five head. So, brilliant. yeah, instead of having the high double head, he's got a five header for one wall. I thought that was brilliant, so I just put like a bit of a laughy face. <laughs> I must admit, I did look at it and I had to question no. it for a couple of minutes. I was like, ah, oh, no. April the 1st. Yep. So, yeah, right. Evening, Lee. Hi, it's Sharon from Tesco's. Um, evening, Andy. Hi, Andrew. Please don't let it be an April Fool's, she says. Um, win one, get one free. Mm, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? So we've just got to work out, obviously we haven't finished this one yet, but we'll announce next week what the next um, kind of prize is going to be. The idea is we want to try and kind of run something every sort of six to eight weeks roughly. It's, it's good for the social media, it's good for obviously bringing awareness to obviously the supporters. So any of the suppliers that are obviously involved, it's nice for them to get some recognition, uh, obviously through a social media element so their numbers go up they get more traffic and it, it, it's just the name of the game yeah. you know a little well a lot for a little involvement i mean in all fairness you guys haven't had to do too much to be fair from the comfort of your sofa yeah well it, they can't really go out it's not like pokemon where we can get them walking the streets because they're not really allowed out. no idea where that came from <laughs> why is it the comfort of their own home don't know where pokemon came from pokemon the i know i know leave it leave it okay Evening, Rex. Tracy, I don't know why you're excited for tonight. You didn't even enter the draw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not being funny, Trace. I know Pete's got one, but you could have had one. Yeah. It would have looked a bit dodge from our side, wouldn't it? It would have been. And the winner is, believe it or not, one Tracy. of our team. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, Tom. it's just the way it works. Evening, Paul. Buzzing for tonight's live. There's subtitles. Yeah, sometimes it puts subtitles on for you and sometimes it doesn't, but... Obviously, don't run by the subtitles because <laughs> sometimes it gets horribly wrong. Honestly, apparently, Facebook's, uh, I don't know whether it's just Facebook, but uh, subtitles really have a problem with the Geordie accent. And that, that's true. They test it against the Geordie accent because it's the hardest one uh, for understand. yeah for subtitles to pick up. Mm, it's not the hard. I mean, you just struggle with all of them. No, I'm all right. It's just when they get further north or as long as... Yeah, pretty much in the UK. It's when they get to like some of the Scottish ones and the Irish ones that I struggle with. Welsh was some of the worst. Who was it? Oh, uh, Danny. Um, who was the guy that Daniel. came? 
Daniel, yeah. Oh my God, he's a lovely guy, but every I I'm like, him. sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Now all the time. So guys, it's Easter, all right. What have you got planned? Are some of you guys working? I mean, are you working your know, Friday or Monday? Have you managed to get time off, or have you got a four-day break? I mean, what's what's the deal? You know, are you actually taking time off? Uh, I don't know what the weather. I, I, it's, it's a bit mixed, isn't it? I think it's. I mean, for us here, it's meant to be dry on Saturday, but mm. and okay tomorrow. But beyond that, I haven't looked. So for us, um, we've got a four-day week, which we've just had a four-day break and another four-day week. So that's pretty cool. Exciting. You've got so many different places to go. <laughs> Down the garden, back. Yeah. Uh, up to the shop, back. The garden centre, back. We're going to have a picnic in Dad's garden on Saturday. We Saturday, are. So we that's are. fine. That'd be quite nice. Um, Andy, yes, you have done the UCAM thing. I can see you. Brilliant. Um, um, evening, Bob. Hi, Archie. Evening, Mr. Pickett. <laughs> so Lindsay's got the VAT evening, to do brother. at some point over the weekend. Yeah. And I keep putting it off. I've been putting it off all week, but I've got to do it, obviously, because it's got to be submitted by the... And I've got um, a lot of work to do for the mentor program that we run. So I've got to set up the homework for these guys. So they think they've got four days off. No, they're going to get a nice little email tomorrow with a video saying, you've got more work to do. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's the way it is. Uh, yes, uh, Trevor's just spotted. We've still got two feet missing. We have. We've asked Michael for that. We might have to steal two off of ours then. Yeah, I can do that. Um, or we just send them to you as one, one each month. <laughs> <laughs> we just drag this thing out. We might so you get, you get this, and then next month we'll send you the hose. <laughs> and then what we'll do is maybe send you the gun, and then Possibly. a filter, and a spring, then well, a tip, then a guard. We're really dragging this out. <laughs> so, yeah. Brilliant. Love it. Um, so what's everybody got? Has anybody come back with what they're doing? Jack, working, working, full. Um, off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, painting mum's kitchen. Hopefully the plaster is dry. Um, Friday and Sunday if my back survives, says Tom. Simon's got four days off. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, Andy's working. Andrew, off Sunday, Monday. So it looks like a few of you have got some time off, apart from Jack. Oh, that Jack's just, him. he's got loads of work coming in, so that's that's good. Yeah, Tom, that's a treasure hunt for feet. <laughs> oh, my God. Like it. Right, so uh, what else working on this evening? We're going to go through a few things. You know, t tonight's more about, obviously, this, you know, just having a bit of a laugh. Uh, we don't want it to, we always say we don't want it to be too late, because, you know, we... We kind of want to slope off and, and, and start chilling out a little bit. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. One of the things I want to talk about today was um, letting go of the reins. You know, it's, it's, it's come up a few times recently on some of the posts I've noticed. It, it's happened to me today. Uh, my two lads now work within the business. Uh, Liam was at university for four years, but because he was in Brighton, he was kind of living at home for most of it. So certain days he was coming in to work with us. He's and he's worked just on and off since he was kind of 17, no, 16. 14, 15, he's been yeah. coming in. He's so 23 now, so. He, he knows the business, but because I've always had guys working, he, he always took the back seat. Now some of the guys, we, we've slimmed it down because of what we're focused on. And he's doing a lot of the spraying. So he's had to do a kitchen today. He's done kitchens with us, that's fine. But I've done the majority of the spraying. This time... I've actually just let him go. I've, I've had to just let the reins off and, let and fly. pretty much, but obviously to a point of being stood there. So there was a few little bits of tuition as he's, as he's doing certain things, just tweaks, tweaks of tweaks. Um, but the point was we had to find a way of letting his confidence grow, but He's still struggling, and I think you guys would, would resonate with this with, with some of your staff. He's still struggling with the whole aspect of <coughs> problems. You know, why, 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 why he's getting runs and why he's getting misses and skips. And well, and, get, and getting frustrated because he's getting yeah. runs, etc. So The bottom line is, guys, just like I, I was saying to the customer earlier, it's only paint. It's only paint. You know, I said, look, if, if the worst case scenario it gets damaged, which is inevitable, all right, it's a kitchen, it's going to take some knocks, some bangs, something's going to go wrong. It's only paint. 
you know, if it's, if it's not in an obvious area, it can just be touched up. If it is, we just take a door off, bring it back to the workshop. We've always got more paint here. We can always order the paint. That's, that's the beauty of you know, dealing with, let's say, Symphony, the fact that the color matches are very good. We just spray it, take it back, refit it. You know, it's just part of the service that we do. So you know, even saying to the customer, look, it's only paint. But also saying to Liam, look, it's only paint. So do you want to throw it? Have you thrown up the yeah, photo? Yeah, I was just going to do it now. So this kitchen has been sprayed this week. We finished it today. I've tried to keep my distance for certain aspects, but I've been in. So we've been in, and he's done the spraying. I, I've just, I didn't pick up the gun once, pretty much. Uh, oh, I did. I did the last bit. We were having a problem with some of the shelving, just the way he was coming in on certain angles. Um, so I just did that last bit. But, you know, we had a few problems with a couple of doors, as you can see with the photos, yeah. one of the doors there. All we did was just mask it. You know, it's not the end of the world. So we just mask it up, give it a quick flick, let it dry a little bit. As soon as it starts kind of flashing off, put the fans on, speed up the drying, take off the protection, carry on with the rest of the kitchen. You know, there's an element of trying to get, trying, trying to let go to a certain extent, but let go in a way that you know shit's going to happen, you know problems are going to happen. It's, it's having a, a system and infrastructure to, to actually be able to handle those problems because that's the only way they're going to learn. Mm. You know, he got really frustrated because <clears throat> he was stood, it just, he was literally just stood in the wrong position. That's all it was. And, and, and just as he's pulling the trigger, I'm, I was like, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Just, I just wanted to move you over to the right a tad because obviously the photo's in. So. Oh, sorry. Your arm movements <coughs> were. So I just wanted him to, to stand in a different place and then he got all like defensive. And I'm like, look, I'm only doing it to make your life easier. And, and I could see what was going to happen and it, it, it did. And he was really pissed off. He was pissed off because he was still in the wrong place. He was pissed off because he felt like I jumped in, uh, which is kind of my job anywhere. But if, if, if I'd have jumped in sooner and made that change, we wouldn't have had to redo that particular door. As it was, we, we got the fan on it, dried it off very quickly. We gave it a sand, went over with some 400 until we were happy. <coughs> gave it a tack rag and a wipe down and a blow off. But equally, if you hadn't <coughs> jumped in before, he wouldn't have learned how to, to deal with that particular scenario. Agreed. Agreed. But he now knows that if he stood in the wrong position, because he was coming down the side of the cooker hood, he came down because he was stood to the left of the cooker hood. As he came down, he had to stop. Then he came up, and I'm like, mate, all you have to do is move. Just move to one side, and away you go. He is left-handed. So, again, he was going around the kitchen as if he was me. And I'm like, no, you need to go the opposite way. And he was like, I can't get my head around that. <laughs> so, but, you, but you need to. You're left-handed. You have to go. So what I'm trying to get at is with the spraying side of it, <clears throat> some of you guys are new, all right? It's going to happen, all right? Runs are going to happen. It's, it's, it's the price of doing business. You're right, Andrew. It's mindset, 100%. It is mindset. You, you, you guys have adopted a new way of looking at applying paint. One of the things that we teach on the course, you know, well, just one of the things, but one of the things we teach on the course is, you know, and I've said this before, what is the clear difference between spraying and any other form of application? And for me, when you're using a brush or a roller, you're using two forms of your sensors. You're also, you're, you're not only able to see what's going on, but you can actually feel it. You guys know how paint feels on a brush. You do, you've been doing it a long time. But you also know how it feels on a roller. You know, if you're putting too much pressure or not enough, and is it sliding or you know, is it, is it clacky? You know, all of those things you, you can actually feel as well as see. With spraying, you don't get that luxury. You're down to one sense, what it looks like. Granted, when you've been spraying a while, you'll, you'll know what it sounds like. But most of the time, it's, it's where you stand and the way you spray. So the difference between brush and roller for me, when people are new, is they don't understand that there is, there is no contact. So understanding how much paint's going on is a very hard thing to, to understand. And it changes per, per, like every different paint is different, every substrate is different. 
the machines even it's different i mean we we were spraying uh, on this one with the kitchen beast it, you know it's the new setup we've got granted we've used qt 190 before the pr19 but this is a brand new setup and the guys are used to using a t4 so going down to that was a different machine but once they actually get in the groove it was it was great it didn't miss a beat it was it was really compact um, Aiden likes it probably more than, than Liam does. He just he just likes the simplicity of it. Aiden's not an overthinker like <laughs> Liam is though. Yeah. And you can tell you like watch. I was watching Liam um, and taking photographs when we were in the booth spraying the doors, and it's a very different scenario. You could see by him being on site in the client's kitchen, you could see the difference in him. Mm. He was a lot more relaxed here in the booth without anybody watching him than he was when he was on site. I think when the zip wall went up and he felt enclosed, mm. he, he, again, you could see he's just a little bit more comfortable, didn't have anybody sort of watching him. Uh, we used the zip wall on this job, um, and I know I, I kind of had a bit of a bitch about it probably a couple of weeks ago. It was last week. <coughs> last week, where people were kind of like, oh, I can get these cheap holes from wherever it was. When you see the reaction, of the client, and I was I was talking to the client for quite a while because she was, it was really good the way she was she was quizzing about obviously this KPN network that we've set up, and how how we do kitchens and and and, and the seamless element of delivering a business, and and we talked about the zip wall. She went when that went up, I just I just thought, oh my god, what a different league. Yeah, because it was like a it's a kitchen living dining room. But then she's telling me about. You know, the, the last house, because they've only recently moved into this one, the last house, they are builders. She said, I, I cannot, the, the thing that freaked her out more than anything was literally the, the continuous mess. You know, uh, the office sprays we would have. And although we're spraying Renner and it was blue, and the way we spray it and the atomization, some of you guys will understand what I mean. It, it, for me, Renner sprays more like a HVLP paint than an airless paint. It's, it's just a very, very fine paint as opposed to, let's say, something like Helmi. It just atomizes, like ambient, atmospheric overspray, very different. Uh, so it travels. So having the zip wall with something like a dark blue, like your Hague blue, oh my God, it was, and, and it did travel. Literally, where, where we'd gone to the, the ceiling, obviously, not, not overspray, but just the dust as a whole, literally landed and I had to get a dry rag, not a wet one obviously, because the guy's got a wet one. I'm like, whoa, stop, stop, stop. Just it's a dust. Just 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 gotcha. and it came off fine, not a problem. But the zip wall is phenomenal. The the client was just like this is and it was great because it was also like ah 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 no <laughs> no. no and she kept coming in. I got no no oh my god you must be a nightmare at Christmas <laughs> <clears throat> Owen said, the boy done good, not an easy colour, that one. It's, no. It's not. It's not. And to be honest with you, Owen, the paint spray is different. Me and you have spoken about this in depth. Um, when we first went down this road of, of, of your really promoting Renner, and, and now Renner's obviously uh, the word on everybody's lips, but, you know, like we said, it's, it's not the easiest thing to master. It does run. You know, it's, it, it, it will mottle, okay? If you don't get the right coverage, it's just as bad. It's not a forgiving paint. Helmy is a very, uh, fine, very we've warm. got a few problems at the moment. Uh, I'll come back to that. But, you know, the Renner, the Renner's different. It's just a different beast. It needs to be thought of differently. You know, I find that when I'm spraying inside a carcass, which I was doing today, you know, some shelving out, I get some real bounce back. You know, and I've got my pressure. I even drop from the 310 to a 308. And all it does is generate more Ambient overspray it gives me a finer finish, but generates more ambient overspray. For me, I just control it. I, d I don't like extracting because I don't believe that pulling like air across my work, which is going to be full of dry ambient overspray, because now it is dry dust, that would pull across my work. That's why we don't like using extractors. We'd rather On just site, yeah. just let the gravity pull it down, okay? Because we spray everything on the vertical. So if we put an extractor, it's pulling horizontal. You, you, you're pulling your air this way, wherever, wherever you're pulling it, on the window, by the door, wherever. You're pulling all of the, the ambient overspray dust across your work. So for us, we would rather just lock it in, spray it, let the ambient air drop. 
Because if it drops and you let gravity do it, it can't go sideways. It can only come down. And therefore, when you sprayed, obviously, on a vertical, it helps. We, you know, we, we don't have any problems at all. We get a really good finish on site. You know, and when we first went to Renner with Owen and the team, they, they couldn't... Owen understands that spraying on a vertical in a residential home with these products is, isn't what any of it was designed for. We've had to find a way to make it work, and you guys have had to find a way to make it work. And the results are very good, and the, the product's good. You know, we've done the testing. You know, I've still got to come back to that, but that, that's a whole new video series that I'm, I'm, I'm focused on at the moment. But spraying that stuff, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing. But when you get it right, it's great. I mean, he, it was really good for them too, because when they left, I'm, I'm chatting to a client, Emily, and, and she, just like, she just said Yo, to the boys, I'm, I'm, I'm so chuffed, I'm so grateful. And there is a lot of grat gratification when you get it personally from the client. And I'm like, hey, I didn't do it. You know, the boys did the work. I just oversaw. You know, I'm just now trying to be more of an overseer and give them the run. They're trying a new machine. All right, that's a bit of a challenge. They're doing a kitchen in hay blue. <laughs> Not the easiest. You know, it's a, it's a very translucent paint. You know, it, it doesn't have that, 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 that body that, let's say, some of the pastel shades have. Although the coverage on it, I must admit, oh, it's phenomenal. color was phenomenal. And it looks incredible. She was literally over the moon. She loved it when it was wet. She loved it even more so when it was dry. But, you know, the, uh, we talk about it a lot. The biggest frustration from you guys starting out spraying is going to come from products. Mm. 100%. Find a product, like we say, own it, nail it, and then play around with product because that is going to be your biggest frustration. And, and, and I know I, this isn't a slant on the big three, you know, let's say Julux, Johnson's and Crown. You know my, my opinion on this. You know, the reason I used Ticarilla was because originally when we used it, nobody knew about it. And it, and it was a good paint. It, was, it still is a good paint. We did a lot of testing yeah. with that as well. We, we, we did so much work. I mean, we've used Helmies for, we worked out about over nine years. And, and that's when, it, like I said, it was called Feelings and we used to get that from Holman Paints. But we've been using it a long time. I look at some of the other paints. They're, they're decorators' paints, and they're, they're, they're paints that decorators use, which is more focused on brush and roll. So the application is, is a thicker product. It brushes better. Okay? It doesn't spray better. The, some of these paints we're now using, they're formulated purely for spraying. They're not meant to be brushed. I mean, like, at all. Don't get me wrong. We've, we've brushed some of the, the products, and they work really well. And that's where I feel that some of the Ticarilla products have changed. I know there's, there's an issue with raw material. I understand that, you know, and I think that's, that's going to keep filtering through. We, we can see more companies wanting to buy raw material. I mean, I know that PPG obviously bought Ticarilla, and I don't think it's because suddenly we're buying loads of Ticarilla. You know, my gut feeling would be something on a spreadsheet is the fact that they can't get the same price for the raw material that Ticarilla can get. Ticarilla have been water-based like from, what, 120 years? You know, it's just for like ever. So they've got really good prices, really good contracts. So PPG, if they can't buy their raw material, they just bought the company. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, depending on how old you are, Remington, whatever it was, the, the shaver. Victor Kayam. I was so impressed, I bought the company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so if he got, if he got a, a breath, I was actually going to say, if John Marcross came online later on or watched this back, I wanted to say happy birthday. But as it turns out, he's literally just popped up. Oh, happy bless him. Happy birthday, John. I will not get Ian to sing. Happy birthday, buddy. Don't want to hear his singing voice. Why is happy birthday the most depressing song ever? Happy birthday. Oh, come on. <laughs> it depends who it sings does. it. It just does my head in. <laughs> just my head in. John says you want a question. Go on then. Give us a question then. Oh, yeah, because I said this last week. I want it on Spray and Make Sense though, mate. But go on. He says, I'm here. I know you're here. I can see you. Well, I can't physically see you. I can see your name. <laughs> um, Bob, loads of probs with Optiva 5, yeah. Um, there is uh, my, my the take. with the boys are oh, lovely. My, my take with the Helmi, uh, sorry, the Ticarilla at the moment, especially the Helmi, I think because there's been such an influx of decorators wanting to use it, and not necessarily spray with it, just use it. So they've been 
your tikkurila now is 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 available in your Kent Blacks or Rab Arts and, and and loads of others that you know I'm not I'm not quite sure because it's a lot more than than we know. So a lot of decorators are now going into these shops and buying the paint that is substituting their their standard paints, their Dulux, Johnson, and everything else. But they're not changing their methodology; they're just changing their paint. And I think what they're doing is they're complaining. They're saying like, "I don't get it." Everybody's talking about it. I didn't like it. I thought it, I thought it was crap. It doesn't brush very well. It doesn't roll very well. <clears throat> so I do think there's a combination with Ticarilla. And I've, I've spoken to them about this. And I have emailed them. And I've said to them, you know, can I have these particular products to do more of the testing to try and put this to bed? I'm not saying it's a bad product. It might just need a rethink and maybe a little bit of manipulation. I don't know. Just working with differently than what yeah. we've been used to. Yeah. So maybe something's got to change. I, I, you know, I've got some ideas, but I don't want the I don't want to let go of the paint because it's it served me so well for so long that I don't think it's it's fair just to drop it. I think it needs a bit more investigation. But I do think the product is more focused now on brush and roll because their their market their market share is is very focused upon decorators and not spray. In other words, decorators that use more brush and roller. And decorator rather than decorators using spray. That's just my gut feeling from from knowing the product and listening and reading between the lines. <coughs> well, that's a shame. <coughs> if that is the case, it is. It is because it was our bread and butter. You know, it, but in in the same token, it gives us a chance to start dealing with. We've dealt with other products and we want to deal more with them. It's just it's a hard shift when you've 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 set your business up with one particular system. And now what you've got to do is start changing that system. But we're going to have to change it anyway, because if the paints aren't performing, we've got to change it anyway. Absolutely. We've got Absolutely. no choice in that. Right, come on. Humor John, he's got the que a question. The question is, I've lost it. Who invented masking tape and what year? Oh, wow. So there you go. Who invented it? Everyone's on Google. Yeah, probably. Come on there, smart. Hey, I like who that. Come up with, who can come up with the answer? Um, I'll tell you what, John, whoever wins it, they can have a hoodie. I'll cool. send him a hoodie. What, John's hoodie? No, John can have a hoodie as well if he wants one. <laughs> I don't know how many hoodies. I've sent loads over in the past, but you can have a new one. Tell me what colour you want, John. It's your birthday. I thought it was for the answer. Oh, someone's obviously been Googling it. <laughs> what can we give John for his Declan, birthday? Declan, I need you. In fact, there's a few of you. Um, yeah, Googled it, LOL. Um, there's a few of, I, few of you. I need you to click the eCam link. You can do it after this. It doesn't have to be um, now. So I will have to look and see who answered it right first. John, for your birthday, I'll tell you what, I'll send you a hoodie, an extension bar, and a couple of tips. So tell as me what tips you want. it's not a six-inch extension bar or a ten-inch, so I can't get them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll send you an bar, extension bar that you don't, it will never use because it'll be the wrong size. And I'll send you some tips that we, we, we don't use at all. Oh, Something. there you go. So John's chosen the winner. It's it's you, Andy. Oh, well done, mate. Or do, do near Byron, but yeah. Oh, Mr. Byron. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, both awesome. of you guys, just send Lindsay a uh, private message, uh, size of top, and John, let me know what size tips you want, and I'll send you two tips, an extension bar and a hoodie, just because you're, you're always here. Even on your birthday, you're here. Of course he's here. He's put in to win the D5. Oh, has he? Yes. Oh, I didn't realise that. <laughs> that's why, that's oh, why we, the only reason we've got people on live tonight. See, John's the only one I know that hasn't actually got a tri tech. He's grey car through and through at the moment, I believe. Oh. He's a bit like we used to. Oh, no, not Mark or, not John Markoff. Oh, I thought Andy Byron I was talking about. Andy Byron's on because of it. Well, he's, well, he's always on anyway, I know. but yeah. No, John's obviously waiting for his Chinese or he's bored for five minutes. He thought he'd come on and say hello. That's fine. You can't keep asking questions. You're supposed to be few. having a birthday. <laughs> He's had a few. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, 1925. It's been around for a long time. Who, who invented it? Uh, Millie Maskin. Someone called Richard Drew. All right, okay, fair enough. That's good. Yeah. I like that. You can do a slot every week, John. Richard Come up with a question. Richard Drew, yeah. I'm not giving you a hoodie every week, though. <laughs> Well, it can be something different another You week, can do the question, someone will win, and we'll send them something. Yeah. There you go. So John's in charge of doing the quiz question. Perfect. There you go. John, you just donated yourself. Well yeah. done. Andy said he doesn't have a tri-tech either. 
Well, you might, you might have soon. Who knows? We'll see how we get on. Right, come on then, what's next? Okay, um, let's do the how, okay? This is something that we are focused on. My passion and drive at the moment is trying to get guys that obviously have seen the benefits of spraying and therefore their profits are going up. But what's also increasing is their time. So what I'm trying to do is get decorators to stop filling it with more work and start focusing on their business. And that's why I've obviously teamed up with, it wasn't even a team up, it was just something that happened naturally from the start of lockdown last year where me and Chris started doing webinars uh, for marketing and business support, etc. So it, it was a case of if, if, if people couldn't come to us, we had to make something so that you guys could watch online. So we did loads of webinars last year. They were very successful. Since then, uh, we've been asked for more and more. So we, we, we listen, we learn, we ask better questions. And we've now got the Decorators Growth Club. So we're very focused on just, it's purely for decorators. That's it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you're other people. It's more about spray and decorator based because that's what we are. I'm not interested really going any further than that. So we've obviously got the webinars. Uh, they're running for the next few weeks as well, well next few months to be fair. Mm -hmm. But the webinars that have already been done, don't feel like you've missed out on that because they've actually been turned into online courses and they've also been turned into podcasts. So we're just trying to get the information to you guys in a format that suits you guys. I think podcast is a great one because people can listen while they're working. The podcasts are just informative about you know, how to do certain things, you know, why, why you should be thinking about Facebook ads, why you should be concentrating on uh, building a strategy for your posting. You know, it, it, it's, it's not, I don't want to go down the route of what other guys are doing. I think they're doing a great job. I know Chris Kerfoot does a great job with his podcast. I know Trevor Mangan, and he does his. And, and that's very interview-based as such with regards to the decorators. And I think that's really cool. I like some of the ones that have been done. But for us, we want to kind of give more, let's say, marketing advice, uh, ideas, just, just trying to give you a different, like uh, we were saying earlier, it's a mind shift. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get you guys to think more business owner-orientated rather than just decorating rather than thinking about your know, paints and machines and decorating let's think about the stuff that technically you're not really up on uh, yeah. you're a little bit nervous about yeah it's just a, a bit a bit more than just getting up and going to work every day it's, it's actually thinking about it and, and building a business thing is as well we know that i was the same you know i i shied away from a lot of it why uh, probably same reason that a lot of people shied away from the spraying what is the fear of the unknown and, and things could go wrong. Yeah, it's time and commitment. And if you're marketing, you've got to put yourself out there. You know, I think, I think the reason decorators like the word of mouth, although I don't agree with it if you're not controlling it, is I do think that the word of mouth is it, it's a safety zone. You know, because you've been recommended, you're like, yeah, okay. You know, I've been recommended. So you feel good before you even go in. You, you know, it's, it's like a hot lead, as we would say. Marketing, oh, that's altogether different. You've got to go to a cold audience and try and warm them up so that they might even turn into a hot client that could actually um, move into something else. Well, half of the work has been done for you already, hasn't it? Yeah. With a lead like that. So I do know that decorators fear it, uh, shy away from it. You know, but what I also know is that every single decorator is on social media pretty much in one form or another. Not actually posting, not actually generating, not actually building business, but it's definitely on there watching, whether you're watching TikTok, whether you're watching Instagram, whether you're watching Facebook, YouTube, it doesn't matter, in groups, you're, you're on there as a spectator. Often too, too much as well, if you look at some of your yeah. hours when um, Apple sends it over, you're like your viewing time is like blimey really we spend a lot of time now consuming okay social media content but as a business owner we should actually be focused on making that content and and, and i keep saying this that I, i'm starting to notice more and more that if you're not doing it i i am watching the fact that your competitors are doing it i mean and in those you know the the the, the, the videos on tiktok are absolutely oh, she, she, awesome. she loves them they make, make me smile. Absolutely frigging I awesome. That, I said that to Andy a few weeks ago. Every video he puts up just makes me smile. It's brilliant. You've just got a really good way mm. of, of nailing it.
and I, I tried to get not obviously not the same video, but I tried to get our lads to do some TikTok kind of videos, and it's not as easy as it. They looks. can't. They can't so, do it. They can't get it. They could. They they know it. They watch it. They're on it all yeah, the time. So respect to you, Andy. That uh, uh, they're not easy to do. At no, all. and when you can turn it and make it work, but you you've got to find something that you enjoy doing as as much as it working as well so yeah. it is it is one of those factors yeah and that's awesome so one of the things we've been working on on the webinars over the past this week and we'll work carry on working on next week is all about your posting because i think one of the things that i found really really helpful when when chris started working with us was building a very simple easy to follow strategy so that we didn't fall off well not just fall off actually we, we would actually build it and schedule it and it would go out and, and it was like, it's done. That was part of my business. It was like filling my diary with customers or sending emails or ordering paint. It was no different. It was just another part of my business. I'd look and say, oh, ordered the paint. I've emailed the clients. I've booked in the dates and I've posted, I've actually scheduled all my marketing. Bloody hell, that's brilliant. So, so that that's something we've been focused on. And if anybody's not sure where to start which to be fair is most of you okay we we got the places to start i mean you know me if anybody wants any information and isn't sure if you want to have a chat pick up the phone you know just just text me first on messenger and i'll have a chat you know i know it works because it's working very well for a lot a lot of people that we've had involvement with tom's asking when are the podcasts going to be available is chris working on them at the minute yeah, to be honest with you, they're, they're coming. But what I wanted to do, Tom, was I wanted to get like at least maybe eight or nine, maybe even ten in front of myself and then start to have it. So we've always got, because if you're anything like me, anything like me, you consume podcasts, okay, because they're easy. You know, and some of these podcasts might only be 20 minutes long, some might be 45 minutes long. But we wanted enough so that you could binge, because I, I know I do, I'd, I'd be driving. I listen to the podcast, I want another one. But if, if I've only got two, it's like, oh. So I, I, I want to keep the momentum. And like I said, the podcast, you know, it's more focused on just kind of getting you guys to think differently about your marketing, you know, about the way you run your business. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't claim to have all the answers. I mean, I need help as much as everybody else. But, you know, just like we did with Spray and Make Sense, just like we did with the Academy. We were the first guy to step forward to say, look, we'll, we'll try and offer more help and support. Uh, it, it doesn't resonate with everybody. Not everybody needs it, but for those that do, it's there if you want it. There's a lot of the um, free online content is already up on the Decorated Growth Club as well, isn't it? It is. You know, they, we, we try and do free content, but seriously, guys, if you, want, if you want to know how to do stuff, I mean, properly how, you need the tutorials. You need someone to walk you through that is, especially staying, let's say, Facebook ads, but has a very good perspective on a decorating industry. Well, that's kind of what we do. It's not one person, it's two people that are very good at this. And we don't focus on just trying to explain to you why you should do stuff and what you should do. We're focused very much on how. So we do everything in real time. We, we pull someone's website maybe, or we, we actually do it for real. And that's the difference. Uh, Granted, you have to pay for the good quality stuff, just like you would anywhere. Yeah, but it's not a lot, though, is it? it? It's peanuts for for the value that you get in return. It is. It's peanuts, but it's strength in numbers, and that's how we're able to do what we do because we have a lot of people that actually consume this content. So it just works. I'm trying to get you guys now that have got the benefit of this. How do you get not only the clients you want, but the rates with those clients that you want? You, I'm trying to get you in more control of the right clients with the right prices. And that, that's what we're trying to do. Both. You need both. And that's, that's what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. So, again, if you want any support with that, have a look over Easter. Just you know, have a look on the Growth Club. Uh, if you're not sure, reach out to me on Messenger. Okay? I'm happy to have a chat. The reason being is this, this is my, it's like the next part of this. All right, I the know this works. Piece of the puzzle. Yep, I know this works. I know this can make money. Now I need to find better jobs to make better money. Mm. That's it. Um, yeah, Tom said he's bored with the radio. Even our 17-year-old son has started listening to audiobooks because he's fed up with the radio, so it must be bad. 
Podcasts are great. They're, they're, they're very quick consumables. I mean, I listen to a lot of podca podcasts, but that's for, for people in America that I find that have got really high value content. So mm. that's what we do. Right. Um, top tip and then treasure hunt winner. Yeah, the top tip's nothing major. I mean, the top tip, uh, to be honest with you, all it was was fixing that unit. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, you know, I, I can go through and explain it, but I, I don't know whether to just go straight into the, the treasure hunt. Well, it's up to you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's running on from letting go of the reins, really. But Okay. All right. It switch the cameras. Leave the door open. Okay. And then hopefully the um, tell me, Tell me if you can hear me and see me. Well, we can see you, but you're not talking. Okay, fine. Can you hear me? Okay. Delay, so, there, there's a delay on it, so. Okay. This this is this happens, all right. This is what we're saying. You're, my lad did it. He put the tip at the wrong place. We couldn't help open the door. And firstly, he sprayed it with compressor because he's trying to get to grips with the compressor. And because the extractor wasn't working, it's working. It's got fixed today. So way. <laughs> uh, I'll come back to that. In fact, I'll do it now. This this was put in by. Um, Steve Cooper, which is high tech, he's the guy that set up high tech. His two lads, uh, Josh, who you've seen on a lot of the videos, he's doing a great job on, on the videos. He really is. I mean, the first, uh, sorry, the YouTube channel's absolutely smashing it. Mm -hmm. So they're from Spirit Direct. So there's obviously Chris and Josh, but Chris came and looked at the area and everything else, and I explained what I wanted with the booth. Steve, even. Pardon? Steve came. Steve, sorry. Who does it? Chris. My apologies, Steve. <laughs> Steve, the dad, came and specified the booth, set it all up, and we had it put in. We put it in as far as a mechanical. Then we got an electrician to do the wiring. But by all accounts, he messed that up a little bit, and we've had a problem. And, and we didn't know what the problem was. But credit to, to Steve and high tech, they just sorted it. Absolutely brilliant. They just like, firstly, we had to figure out what the problem was. We did a lot of video FaceTime. Uh, one of the guys, which was a technician that is from Manchester, helped us as well. We couldn't figure out what it was. They've been today with a new motor and everything else, checked everything over, done it. Absolutely fantastic. So to be honest with you, if you are looking at booths, we would be recommending them anyway because obviously they've, they've done really well for us. But that just kind of bolstered everything. The fact that, Ian, you've got a problem, just leave it. We're, we're just going to sort it. And they did. And to be fair, you know, I, I, I can't speak highly enough. So, you know, massive thanks that it's up and running again. But the problem was, whilst it wasn't, we were generating a lot of overspray with the compressor. So we were getting a little bit of dry dust everywhere, and Liam wasn't happy with it. So I said, finish the final one with Airless, because he's more conversant with it. You're going to put a slightly thicker coat, and you'll get over the problem, which he did. Which he did but he generated himself another problem, this door, because it's had a few coats now, and that hinge, which isn't down to us because we're having some carpentry work done, needs to be sorted. So the door got stuck. So what happened was, as he jimmied the door open, he took a nick out. So today he's been in, and he sanded it, and he's literally just dealt with, he firstly masked off the inside, just to deal with a couple of bits he personally wasn't happy with, which I thought was good, and then he masked this off. But he went back to the compressor. So again, you can see the very little bit of overspray, a little bit of testing, which I thought was good, okay? Test it over here. So he's doing everything right, okay? You know, he didn't have to spray everything. You've just got to find the right lines, which are the construction lines, where you can actually lose the tape with a shadow. So yes, he's had to any, choose where yeah, it goes. Any build-up that comes through from masking it off, you mean? Yeah, so this now, from our side, technically, and again, we use pink. I mean, it has it has cured. It, we did this last week, so it has had a good week. But again, just to be sure, we ran with pink just to make sure that it didn't pull. Although we put yellow tape on the doors, so jobs are good. In. But your point with that was about having different units for different things, wasn't it? Having what? Different units for different machines for different jobs. It is. I'll come back in there. You know, for me, 
I believe that as a decorator who uses spray technology is no different than a decorator that has, you know, we, we, we use Starmeister brushes when we do our kitchens because we find them very smooth. We use uh, Fossa brushes, we use uh, Blaze, we use microfiber rollers, we use Worcester rollers. You know, we've got a collection of things that work as part of the team. That, don't get me on about fillers and everything else. But the point is, you, you guys do that as a natural course anyway. But as you start spraying, you're going to start to have, technically, three machines. Four, if you start with a workshop. So number one, you're going to start with your airless, which is your, your main machine. Then you're going to have maybe a HVLP for that small residential, your finished job where you can just put it on the counter. Then you're going to end up with a compressor, which is something that is slightly more versatile. You can obviously go up to 30, 40 PSI and have uh, a longer hose and different guns, etc. So there's versatility there. And then if you do end up with a workshop, you're probably going to go down the triple air route. You know, but you're going to need extraction for that and obviously heating. So, you know, this is, this is the factor of what you're going to end up doing. You know, don't, don't buy one machine and expect it to do everything. And don't buy this machine and expect it to do everything. This will do, you know, a percentage. So spraying for me as a decorator is a percentage game. With this, I'd like to be uh, 75 to 80% spraying. Maybe I might need the HVLP for maybe 5 to 10%. This, this, and, and, and the brushes and the rollers for the rest of it. it. It's a percentage game. So you've got to have a bit of kit as you start to go. Uh, what bit of kit? Well, that's down to you. I mean, if anybody needs any help, and most of you guys now know that we've got SMS spray supplies, um, everything that we obviously try and push through the SMS spray supplies is, is focused in line pretty much with our ethos at the academy. It's It's... It's training, education, and support. It's about offering value. It's not about cutting prices. I believe that places like Brewers and Julux have actually cheapened our, our industry. Not, 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 not sprayers, but spraying. By saying to builders and everything else that you know, they're not expensive. Whereas Festool tools, their prices go up. Yet our sprays have come down. When you've got brewers literally knocking the price out of these things, because they're hoping that you're going to buy more paint, all it does is cheapen the whole value of, of spraying as a whole. I want these to be friggin' expensive. So when a customer looks and thinks, they're not mocking about, are they? I mean, look at the gear. He's, he's got the right machines. So, you know, he's invested a lot of money into his business. I want him. It's not just brewers, though, in all fairness. It's a not. Lot of paint manufacturers were doing it. It's not. I'm not. I'm not picking a brewers, but you guys know that. You know some of the prices. I mean, they did the clean shots at sixty-eight quid. I wish I knew. We'd have bought pretty much most of them. Loads, yeah. Yeah, I think that was maybe a bit of an oversight, but maybe not. I don't think brewers make those kind of mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard anything about it more recently, so I don't think it's something that's going. I I, I haven't got a thing against brewers. I I have a thing about the fact that they they they're cheapening spraying. And, and, and making it so accessible that even customers, because you've got to remember a lot of customers, builders, everything else, brewers aren't just a paint shop, all right? They, they do a bit of everything. So when customers and everything else see a machine and you're trying to put your prices up because you're delivering a the finish, they're going, yeah, but, you know, the machine was only this. You know, it's not like a, a carpenter that spends, you know, X amount. You know, I think we have a hard enough time anyway. And I know that last week I said that, you know, I don't like decorators. No, I don't, because I think there's a lot of toshes out there that are now using the sprayers. You know, people have said, oh, people are having a, you know, a go on the sprayers and they're making a right mess. Well, they've been using the brush and roller for just as long and they've been making a mess with that. It's just that they've figured out, same as what we have, that they can make more of a mess in a quicker, in a quicker way. <laughs> so, but so, that's been going on for years. Yeah, that's and it's not going to change. What's, it's not going to change unless we change. I mean, what that um, we did a job, didn't we? Of two houses identical side by side. Mm. We got one of them, and another company got another. And you walked into one, and it was literally oh, it was he hired a everything machine, was whitewash. Floors were white. He was white. I mean, I was there with Michael Fowl. It was Michael's job. Oh, it was Michael's one. It was Michael's job, and and we walked in. I'm saying to the fella, "What tip are you using?" He went, and he looks at his mate, and he went, "One that came with it." I went, <laughs> oh, okay. 
and what pressure are you running? And he looks at his mate again, he went, just whack it up, don't you? He said, you could, but that's not what we do. I mean, Michael now is doing some really, really good work. He's just put a post up. He's got a big job in London. He's looking for people to help out. Mm -hmm. So credit to Michael. Mm -hmm. He's turned into a good sprayer. But he's turned into a good sprayer with the, with the right ethos. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's not that I hate decorators. I hate decorators because it's a label that Toshers can, can adopt. You know, electricians are called qualified electricians. They're regulated. You know, the plumbers, are, you know, they're, they're regulated. They're, they're, they're qualified. Decorators, you, know, you could be a Tosher. You could literally come out of one industry and pick up a brush and roller and call yourself a decorator. You know, my don't thing get is, me wrong, some of those might be really good. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's trying to get you guys to be a different league yet again. I mean, Spray Makes Sense has always been that frowned upon group that thinks themselves high and mighty and they think they're all very precious because they don't swear and they don't do this and they don't have a laugh because they're all up their own asses. <laughs> yeah. Really? Where uh, was that said? <laughs> but this, this is what we are. I've always tried to say this is the ethos of the group. The group is you guys are, in my opinion, an elite system. You know, and you guys set the standard. You don't follow the standard, you set the standard. And I think every single one of you would say, yes, I do. I, I believe that the way I deliver my business with my brain and the systems that I'm doing, I'm always striving to, to learn more, to try more, to test more, um, because you want to be you know, the, the elite. You, know, you want to be getting the better jobs, getting the better pay, and getting the better results. And ahead of your competition yeah. as well. So, you know, that, that's my ethos of, of everything in spraying makes sense. You know, is to raise the respect, to raise the rate. It's always been the same, never changed. I just, I've just got to find different ways of doing it. And the new way of doing it, for me, is trying to help you guys with the marketing side of stuff and the business side of stuff. That's all. So, enough on me. Let's, let's do this. We're going to do this, are we? I'm quite <coughs> Lindsay's doing it. I'm actually quite scared. She's hoping she don't mess it up. Do you want to explain what you're going to do to try and keep it as fair? Yeah. All right, before we do, okay, can I just say we had dozens and dozens and dozens of applicants, all right? People that jumped in, signed up, started. But, guys, it's a treasure hunt. We, we've made you work. And I've got to be honest with you, a lot of you guys that have done it, you didn't do it. You were even emailing us and texting us saying, oh, it's here. And we're going, no, it's not. <laughs> so we've gone through, my daughter's done all of it, and we've checked that you've done everything we asked you to do. Okay. So the only people tonight that are actually in this, this draw are the people that actually did what we said. We're going to do another one of these. And if you want to get involved, you've got to do the treasure hunt because it's not fair on everybody else if you only do part of it. Well, it's not fair on you because you're wasting your time, basically. I also, before we, before we do this, I just want to give a massive shout, all right? This is Don Applegate, who is on the group, okay? Don's our, let's say, liaison for, for Tritec. He's, he's, he's chief of sales, uh, top fella. They gave me this, okay, as a replacement for one of my machines. There's nothing wrong with the machine, all right? It, it might not be as, as nice as a new one, but I said I didn't need it. I want, I'm quite happy to stick with what I've got. It works really well with the academy. I still use it on certain jobs. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give this away. So this is a combination of Don, obviously supporting us through the academy and spray makes sense. And he gave us this. This is Arista Spray by supporting us through, uh, I'll try to take through Arista Spray. And again, supporting us. Dave Carter is, is our guy. Okay. And if anybody needs anything from Arista Spray, he's the guy. Okay. And, and then us. This is mine. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it away. I don't need it. I'd rather give a little bit back because a lot of people copy what we do, okay? And it's take, 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 all right? It's a giver's game, all right? It's a giver's game. The more you give, the more you'll receive. It, it, it's, it's simple human nature. So I wanted to make sure that just me being me and I worry about everything, I wanted to make sure that nobody thought it was rigged, um, everybody had a fair Sorry. go at it. We haven't taken anybody out. And I am going to run it, the actual draw, live. I hope you, I think she is literally doing kittens. I am, because I'm panicking. I haven't refreshed the, the thing. Is it going to do it properly? So let's just. We're see. only doing one hit. We're not doing a refresh. We will just 
if this works, absolutely fantastic. If it doesn't, then just bear with me five minutes. I might have to refresh it and do a little bit of work in the background. So, good luck, guys. You know, obviously, congratulations to the winner. Let's see what happens. Right, I've got to come off screen. So, ready? Did it work? Andrew Chatfield. Wow. Awesome. Boom. There we go. Andy, Ooh. is he on tonight? I don't know if he is, actually. <laughs> That's <laughs> typical, isn't it? We can only do what we do. We try to be fair. So yeah. if he doesn't claim it in the next 10 minutes... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to rerun it. <laughs> actually, we should have made that a condition. That we'll do that on the next one. Yeah, we should have made that a condition that you were actually... You live and learn. Every day is a school day. On the night. So. Every day is a school day. Oh, you he is on. He is on. Well done, Andrew. I bet he's like this. I bet he's like this. <laughs> he's round. He's going like this round the room. <laughs> Are you one happy man? Awesome. Well done. He's actually, honestly, I've had this. I thought I'd actually be upset to see it leave. I'm not. I'm not. I, genuinely, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits. Oh, I'm fed up with dust in it. <laughs> I'm chuffed to bits. It's really good. It's, it's lovely to be able to, to do it. Has Andy done any training with uh, us? The name rings a bell, I must admit. If he hasn't, then you're obviously we're not going to let this go without training. Um, the only thing is with this, okay, you've got to come and pick it up. I don't know where he is. You know, he, do, he has done. Oh, he lives in Hastings, actually. So Right, come and pick it up, okay? Come and pick it up. He has done. Let's get some photo and video, because this is, this again, this is this is a great thanks to Don and the team at TriTech Tri Tri Industries. So, again... Yeah, come up, pick it up. I'll tell you what, I'll be driving up here to pick this up quite happily. <laughs> so I don't mean tonight. No, 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 not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> Reach out to us over the weekend and we'll sort something out for you next week. I love that. Can't believe I won. Never win anything. Oh, that is oh. so cool. Awesome. Happy oh. Easter. Yes. Great Happy start. Easter. Great start to the long, a long weekend. <laughs> Wrong surname. <laughs> yes, bugger. Sorry, Andrew. Sorry, guys, but uh, I mean, if... Uh, if you want to do this again, seriously, tell me. If you want, all right, just give well, that's me. That's a stupid question because everyone's going to want to. No, do it but again. seriously, you know, you, you've done the try. You've done the treasure hunts and everything else. All right, we will do another machine. We'll do another setup. I think the next one I'm going to do. I'm talking about giving a kitchen beast. Okay, that's that's from us at the SMS for air supplies. Okay, I'm going to give a kitchen beast. Okay, which is the whole setup. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll work out where I'm going to run it from. And it's the same format. We'll do, again, another, this time, for Arista Spray. Because they're supporters and everything else. And we'll do it for Arista Spray. So any of the suppliers that are out there, you know, Sprayman, everybody else, okay? If you are know, uh, Greco, Wagner. Greco, Wagner, all of it. Colin, um, Josh, Chris, you know, uh, Spray Direct, Spray Plant, any of you guys, okay? Anybody who wants to get involved, okay? We're happy to do it. We're happy to, do, to push this, okay? We, we enjoy doing it. It's exciting. It's really nice to... what Now I know it works, I can do it again. <laughs> do it again until everyone wins something. Colin, wouldn't that be absolutely bloody Well, awesome. we're going to be around for a while, so do you know what? Yeah. As, if we get the support, we'll do the giving. Absolutely. As simple as that. We will be the conduit for you guys to get... And, and, and just give a little bit back, because I swear to God, you suppliers make an absolute fortune off our industry. These guys in here spend mega money. So, every once in a while, giving a little back, it's always good. Lovely. It's lovely. Are you we do. That We're going to be the first ones. We will give. We, that's, that's through SMS Spray Supplies. We will sort that. Are you going to put my hat back on the shelf in the uh, classroom? Yeah, well, Don, you if need? you're watching this in return, all right, we need more hats. We want some merchandise, all right? Get some over here. We'll give it away on a regular basis. Make sure that this, this brand is always front of mind. And again, for everybody else who wants to get involved. Oh, Colin, H126, question mark. Oh. Um, oh, now that would be interesting. It would. Um, it would, but, yeah, okay, no, I'm not going to say that. We, we have spoken about this. Yeah. We have spoken about this. Um, and I know your reasoning and you know my reasoning, but let's, we, we were, we've been due to a catch-up over the past few weeks and we've just been busy. I've got to come down and pick up my cobra, so... If I, Colin, if I put that on broadcast, you can't 
you can't go back on it now. Then. Colin wouldn't. Colin has <laughs> always been a supporter. I mean, Colin's always, out of everybody, Colin's been one of our best supporters as well. He's always supporting us with everything that he can. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, Trevor. <laughs> so Don Applegate, the hats, and obviously the feet for the, the yeah. machine as well. Hat and feet. Yeah. Don, hat and feet. All right. <laughs> not, the, not mine, these. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Um, right. Loved it. We were both really nervous about it tonight. I was so nervous that that wasn't going to work. Um, and I, like me, I just over, overthink things, and this is obviously where our Liam gets it from. Um, I, yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure I could do it in a way where people could see it wasn't rigged. Oh, yeah, box only. Yeah, we could just sit and, and drool over the box, Colin. That, that would be good, wouldn't it? To be honest, we're, you know, it's good. It's, it's great to try and help you guys. It's good to try and pull you guys together just on a Thursday night for an hour for a bit of a laugh. Uh, and give a little bit back. It is. Um, seriously, guys, you know, I am very focused about trying to help as many as uh, as many of you guys as we can. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, you already know the academy. We've already done the CITB. If any of you guys haven't yet got the the five thousand pounds, reach out to me on Messenger. Okay. Let's see if we can still help you with this. If you can't access the CITB, reach out to me personally. We'll have a chat and we'll see what we can do. All right. We've you know, we there's always. For me, there's a thousand ways of skinning the cat, all right? And I want to help you guys with your marketing. I want to do what I can, all right? You are the elites, all right? I know the other groups look at you and you, you, you are what you are, but seriously, guys, when you've got one of these bad boys in the, in the arsenal? Well, Andrew has, <laughs> soon. Hey. <laughs> awesome. Cheers, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. We love support. the support, Thank yeah. you to the suppliers, obviously, for their support. That was really... Really good. I enjoyed like that. that. I am I am genuinely chuffed a bit. I can't wait for him to come and pick it up. Um, fire Thank it you up. to everyone who entered. And obviously, congratulations, Andrew, on the machine. I'm, I'll message you over the next couple of days, obviously, and we'll organise coming and collecting it um, as well. So cool. Have yourselves a fantastic Easter. And I think Andy's probably just like literally skipping around the room still. <laughs> Guys. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, and yeah. we will see you again next have, week. Have a fantastic one. We're off for a kebab and a beer now. Excellent. Nice one. Night, guys. Night, see night. Bye-bye.